Hello guys and welcome to another nugget of the day. In this week's nugget, we are going to discuss how to identify different cervical nerve roots depending on the features uh, of the corresponding cervical vertebral tubercles on the ultrasound. This may be quite important to deposit the local anesthetic solution mainly at C5 and C6 nerve roots which supply the shoulder joint. Uh, let's have a look how this is done. When we place the ultrasound probe on the uh, supraclavicular uh, area and try and move it proximally, uh, the interscalene uh, plexus uh, becomes apparent uh, and we need to identify the C7, the C6 and the C5 nerve roots. Uh, this may be accomplished by trying to identify the uh, zone anatomy of the tubercles of these corresponding cervical vertebras. In case of C7, only a posterior tubercle is seen um, and the nerve uh, can be seen uh, lying medial to this posterior tubercle. There is no anterior tubercle in this case. In case of C6, both an anterior and posterior tubercles are seen uh, and it should be noted here that the anterior tubercle is higher than the posterior tubercle and this is also called the Chassignac tubercle which makes it palpable. In case of C5, both the tubercles are of equal height and the nerve root lies between uh, these two tubercles. Let's now have a look at uh, an ultrasound uh, picture. Here we can see uh, the uh, interscalene uh, uh, brachial plexus at interscalene area. Um, and at this junction, we can see the nerve root lying at uh, the posterior tubercle, and therefore this has to be C7. As we move the ultrasound probe a bit more proximally, the C6 uh, tubercle come into view. Uh, with the anterior being characteristically higher than the posterior tubercle and therefore this has to be C6. As we move the probe even more proximally, we find two further tubercles come into view but these are of equal height and therefore this has to be C5. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.